Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharti and we are here at Coupon Cloud Decon in London. And today we have with us once again, David Nelly, Director of Open Source Strategy and Marketing at AWS. David, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me back. I, does this mean you didn't learn your lesson the first time if you invited me back again? Well, we all make mistakes, right? We and do. some of us, we don't learn lessons, so <laughs> we, we continue to do. Again. That's very true. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's once again, great event, great city. Uh, talk a bit from your perspective, how do you see this event, this city? You know, this, this event has become the must attend. It feels like it's one of the largest open source events uh, in the world. And, you know, so many people here uh, so many projects, even if they're not in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, they use this as a nexus for getting together, uh, getting their communities together. Really powerful place. Uh, I, it's it's really nice that it's in London. This is an amazing space that that they've got available for us, allowing us to spread out a little bit. But you know, it's this is a lot of fun. From AWS perspective, open source perspective, any announcement that you folks made here? Of course, we'll talk about Velky, but beyond Velky, there's a special place in my heart for Velky. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but there's there's plenty of other things that are interesting. Uh, so we announced uh, we announced earlier this week that we were renewing our commitment to um, uh, to provide infrastructure for Kubernetes. So it's really expensive to build, test, uh, run all of the performance testing that's required for Kubernetes. And uh, so we spend, we we commit up to about $3 million a year for uh, CNCF to run that infrastructure. And that's above and beyond our, the membership dues and a bunch of the other funding that we pour into CNCF, just focus on Kubernetes. So we're renewing that again this year uh, we're excited to be able to continue that commitment. Uh, one of the things that perhaps is a little more product focused, but it's Kubernetes product focus, is uh, that we are we announced a uh, community add-on focus. So essentially, a catalog for folks to take all of the CNCF add-ons and to be able to plug in easily into their EKS infrastructure, uh, and so. Hopefully we're doing a couple of things for that. One is we're providing a consistent interface, whether you're consuming things from the AWS marketplace or you just want to consume a community developed add-on to Kubernetes. We're giving you a consistent way to do that, that you can manage all in one place. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, the thing that's been really a buzz here is auto mode for Kubernetes, uh, which is something that uh, the EKS team developed and released to CNCF uh, last year, uh, but that's been getting a lot of buzz and a lot of attention. Excellent, uh, thank you. And now I will, you know, uh, I also want to talk about, I mean, of course I'll talk about Velky and I'll, I'll talk about open source, you know, but those are two projects, you know, that open source come from, you know, AWS last day. But before that, uh, one of the hottest topic these days is AI, you know, LLM. Uh, and of course, with the deep seek and open source, talk about your, the how you look at open source and AI. So this is a really complicated issue, right? So much of AI is built with open source. Uh, people are using PyTorch to do the training. Uh, they're using things like LangChain and uh, Crew AI to do a lot of the, the building and stringing together of, of uh, models and agents. Uh, and so open source really has its roots at uh, both the building and enablement for AI. There's lots of controversy around the definition of what uh, open source AI might be. I don't think that that's a settled question yet. That you know, we've got uh, model weights that are licensed under open source licenses, which is great, uh, which is certainly a move ahead of the uh, the strict licenses that said you can use it for this but not for that, uh, and so that's a that's a move forward, but uh, without the data, which very few models are providing, it's really hard to be able to recreate and modify. And so if you're looking at kind of the history of, of open source and you go back to things like the Debian free software guidelines and before that, the four freedoms from the FSF, uh, the, the 
permission to explore how it works and how it uh, and modify it and then ship changes uh, really appears to be missing without access to the to the raw data. And so that seems like it's still a little bit of controversy. Uh, and people are trying to decide how, just how much needs to be open for it to be considered open source. Um, but, you know, open source pervades everything in AI, uh, whether it's the, um, whether it's the open source tools that are used to build it, the open source infrastructure on it. I, I, I was talking with someone a little bit earlier and one of the primary uses we're seeing people use Kubernetes for right now is to run those training workloads and, uh, you know, the ability to, to orchestrate those massive workloads is, uh, is a lot of work and that Kubernetes makes simpler. So I think um, my sense is, is that uh, AI is one of many workloads that Kubernetes in this, the cloud native space is enabling. Once again, and going back to FSF, you know, for definition, you know, the basic idea was I should be able to see the code, I should be able to modify the code, and I should be able to redistribute the code. We can yep. talk about all the licenses, but the Richard Stallman, I used to talk to him a lot. Yep. That was the whole idea, right? I should be able to see, write, see, and see, study, and, do whatever I want with yeah, it. Yeah, and use it. So, I mean, the word is a complex place, but this is also, yeah. it's not as simple as a lamp stack, right? Absolutely, so, so it's not. It certainly is not. It will not. take time, yeah. And OSI and, and is doing some work, and you are also involved with some, you know, open source foundations and organizations well, as well. Well, you know, the Linux Foundation is also doing some uh, definitional work as well. Uh, so there's there's a lot of places trying to figure that out. It is, it's a lot more complex, though, because uh, software, and specifically source code and object code, is only one small facet of these AI systems. Uh, we've got we've got lots of math. We've got the transformers, which typically is implemented in software. But you know, it, it's a lot more complex and a lot of different types of intellectual property than source code. In many ways, software is much simpler of a of a concept to wrap your head around. No, oh, so very true. And this is a discussion we will continue to have in future. I will keep the favorite well key for the end, the, keep the best for okay. that. I'm not going to pick uh, favorites, but uh, let's I'll talk. I'll pick a favorite. Valky is my favorite. No, I know. That's what I, no, I'm saying that, but uh, it's mine, so I will keep yeah. it the best for the last. Sure. But I want to talk about the Open Search Foundation. Give us an update what's going on with that. Yeah, so uh, to give you a quick background, uh, several years ago, uh, Elasticsearch uh, was a open source project and the company behind Elasticsearch decided to change the license. And uh, we saw that and we saw that, you know, Elasticsearch was really some foundational technology that everybody was using, uh, including many of our customers. And we felt an obligation to preserve that open source status because many people found that useful and, and also just transparently, it's a big part of our business. And so, um, we created a hard fork of uh, of Elasticsearch, called that Open Search, and we spent the first couple of years really trying to build up all of the infrastructure needed to release and test and get those processes in place to actually build a successful project. Uh, on top of that, we were working to build a community, and you know, on day one, the people who showed up were primarily from AWS. There were some other folks who were interested, but relatively small in numbers uh, when we first created the fork. And so we spent a couple of years trying to create a critical mass of community and with the end goal that we would move this to a foundation. And so we made good on that trajectory uh, last year. Uh, and uh, announced that we were moving OpenSearch to the Linux Foundation. And so OpenSearch is now a standalone project uh, at the Linux Foundation and uh, has the independent governance that comes with being at the OpenSearch Foundation. Uh, and we're really excited about the, the growth that that project is seeing. I talked a little bit about uh, OpenSearch needing that critical mass of community, and I, I think that that's vital for the success of any open source project is that people have to care enough and want to contribute enough that they're willing to actually go do work. Uh, and so that community has grown. We're really excited about that. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, there's OpenSearchCon coming up in just a couple of months in, um, 
in Amsterdam, and the Linux Foundation is is producing that conference for us as well. Oh, that's once again excellent to hear that. Uh, yeah. Now, now I will talk about. Oh, now you uh, want to talk about Valve? Eight dot one, eight zero dot one came out. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I will go back to the background so folks who don't know sure. they get the background that why it was created. And, and, and let me talk last time the speed at which it emerged and the first release was out. That was incredible. So just talk about the prowess, the tower of the community there. Yeah. So if you want to talk about a community success story, it is Valky. And frankly, it's the reason that it's my favorite. Uh, so similar situation to what I just described where uh, there was a license change in Redis. And so the license change to something that was no longer open source uh, the community, and I, I truly mean the community, including people who were existing maintainers of Redis, and so were deeply involved in the Redis community and had standing in that community and had been longtime contributors, they moved very quickly. They forked the code base to the last version of Redis. They uh, quickly began development. They, they figured out that they needed a name. They figured out governance. And the announcement for Valky came eight days after the license change announcement happened. And if, you, if you've been around in open source uh, for any length of time and have watched some of these foundations form, you know, if you see something done in six months, that's really fast. So eight days is unheard of. But what it really speaks to is the strength and passion of that community was so great. Uh, and they were ready to go. They they wanted to take ownership of the project and take responsibility for it, and they did so, and they moved really fast uh, to to grow that community and build it up. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's, as you rightly mentioned, if you want to see the success story of Hyperspace, this is a great example of speed, commitment, and everybody came together. Yes, yeah, the, the critical mass was formed almost overnight, uh, and when you looked at some of the companies who were sponsoring developers to work on it, it included folks like Google and Oracle and Verizon and Snap and, you know, plenty of others, a couple dozen others uh, that said, hey, this is important software to us and we believe that it's important that it remains open source. And can you talk about the new release, you know, anything yes. significant that you want to talk about 8.1, you know? Yeah, so 8.1. This is the second feature release uh, that Valky's made. So uh, they initially launched 724, uh, which was effectively uh, a copy of what was in development right before the, um, the license change happened. So that was essentially steady state. They needed to get that out there. Uh, 8.0 happened last fall and uh, was the first feature release and contained a number of performance enhancements. 8.1 was just announced this morning. Uh, I think the actual code was cut uh, yesterday, but but the announcement went out this morning. And so 8.1 is in the wild now. Uh, some really interesting pieces about that. The most interesting, it's AI related, uh, is vector search. And so if you want to talk about a... Um, a true community success story. This is one of them uh, within the success story that is Valky. So both Google and Amazon had created vector search implementations and they had done that independently. They were unable to contribute that to Redis. And, uh, but when Valky launched, they said, we wanna add vector search capabilities. They started collaborating together uh, and said, hey, we both got, have these independent implementations. Let's go look at them. And so the community looked at both of these new features or both of these feature implementations that were doing similar things. And they decided they ultimately ended up going with Google's implementation, took Google's implementation and, uh, and did really impressive uh, work with it. So now um, Redis can do vector search out of the box. It, it's... It's uh, it's part of the project now, and uh, plenty of other things that are interesting features like Bloom filters that were added. Uh, that if you're really into machine learning, matters a lot to you. But um, 
I'm also just amazed by the performance improvements that they're shipping. So A.O saw a 20% performance improvement in memory. Uh, so memory consumption is 20% lower, which for an in-memory database, or at least primarily in-memory database, that's a big deal. Uh, so that's 8.0, that's last fall. 8.1 is seeing a huge uh, influx, including 20% performance on uh, on data streams that are in uh, encrypted. Uh, there's a couple of other performance improvements, but I'm just amazed at what this unfettered community is able to deliver just in terms of upping the percentage of, uh, I'm sorry, the upper, upping the performance of Valky as a product. Because Valky is, uh, the underlying technology has been around for two decades now. And so we're still seeing this team do drive a lot of innovation a lot of performance increases. And I think it's a testament to the health and the vibrancy of that community. Uh, when we talk about these open source products, you know, we do hear the name Google, AWS, other, but then there, there are developers who have poor, poor I mean, it's a huge community, but there are also some names that pop up. They have really done a, a lot of heavy lifting that you would like to mention. First of all, I think that there's, uh, there's a lot of rock stars. My personal favorites, Madeline Olson, uh, and primarily that's some of that's proximity bias because I get to spend time with Madeline on a recurring basis. And I think she's done amazing work, but there's also Ping Xi, uh, Zhao Zhao, Zhu Bin Bin, uh, Wen Huai, and Victor Soderquist, who are the current maintainers. And these folks are doing a ton of work to go and deliver uh, on the promise of Valky and they're doing a ton of work in guiding this community. Uh, these folks are all rock stars. They are the people who are keeping this community-driven project alive and are leading it through a pretty tumultuous time uh, and, and doing so really quickly and, and driving, a ton of, um, driving a ton of innovation into the project. So those folks, those are the rock stars of the project, you know, we you were right. We talk about uh, AWS and Oracle and Google and Verizon and and other companies, uh, and and it's great that they support this. They they've got uh, business reasons for doing so, and appreciate that. But these individuals are are the true story of Valky. David, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and then to talk about Velky, your favorite, uh, of course, open source and the larger open source and the work that, you know, AWS is doing. And before you, I was talking to Greg Hartman and AWS name keep coming up, you know, in the kernel community as well. So it's good to see, you know, a lot of open source. I mean, more open source is always good and it's also good to talk about it. So thanks for taking time out and talk about it. And I look forward to the next discussion. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate getting a chance to come talk to you again. You know, open source remains super important to AWS and to our customers, and we're going to continue investing in it. I appreciate you letting us have a conversation about it.